It was what a mess. It's not not the not the personal videos. Please join me for the no 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 the whole thing. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. No, I meant the building wide for a video. It's there. Yeah. Okay. Tonight we start with public comment. Welcome to the. January 25th, 2016, Selectman's meeting. Anyone wishing public comment? Seeing none. Oh, my goodness. Mr. Waddell. On set. Mr. Bridal. I would just like to remind everybody that we do have a tax deed uh, public auction on Friday, January 29th at 3 p.m. at 27 Pearl Street. This is a piece of property that uh, the town owns and uh, we are putting up for for auction. So. Mrs. Wolseley. Yes, I know people hate to give up their Saturday mornings, but on Saturday morning at Winnicott, we will be holding the annual deliberative session. It's your turn to get some hands on on what's going on in the warrant for March. Uh, even if you can just give us the morning, we will love to see you there, and we really need help uh, in getting all of the uh, warrant articles and money articles squared away. Number two, um, I want to uh, send a special um, thank you to Sergeant Stephen Henderson, who retired from the Hampton Police Department on January 4th, after 30 years of faithful service to his community. And he was engaged in many charitable activities uh, as well. So uh, we thank him so much for his service and wish him the very, very best in the future. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And again, uh, congratulations to both uh, uh, Officer Sergeant Henderson and, and his family uh, in uh, his service to one of the finest police departments uh, in the nation. Uh, great job, great leadership uh, by all parts uh, in the Hampton Police Department and Sergeant Henderson. Thank you, sir. Yeah. And again, um, thank you, Steve Henderson. Um, three years is a long time, and I'm sure he uh, enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed having him here. The deliberative session will go well into the afternoon, so it's not just in the morning. In case anybody is planning on being there, you're mm -hmm. welcome to come all through the day. I estimate that it would go at least until 4 o'clock. You're an optimist. Well... <laughs> We'll see how it goes. <clears throat> Next, we're going to, our consent agenda tonight consists of veteran requalifications, notice of intent to cut wood or timber on Timber Swamp Road, limousine license, and a parade and public gathering license. Motion to accept the consent agenda. Second. All those in um, favor? May just, just for the public's understanding, the limousine license is going to a local resident. And the uh, cycle from the seacoast is going to take place on state um, roadways, I believe. That's all. All those in favor, unanimous. Next for appointments tonight, we have Chief Sawyer, Police Department. All by yourself tonight? All by myself tonight. Actually, I'm here on behalf of Special Olympics New Hampshire ah. to present the uh, uh, 17th Annual Penguin Plunge and the 8th Annual High School Plunge. <laughs> and those are going to be conducted on Saturday, February 6th and Sunday, February 7th. If you're familiar with the event, I, I think a lot of people are here in town. Uh, the benefits uh, of these events go to support the athletes of Special Olympics New Hampshire. And... The plan is the same that we've experienced over the last several years. Uh, our plan is to detour traffic off of Ocean Boulevard northbound down um, H Street and H Street back up to D Street and D Street back northbound onto Ocean Boulevard. Uh, we'll have those traffic control points manned by police officers of the Hampton Police Department on paid detail, uh, being paid by Special Olympics New Hampshire, also working the security for the event. Um, I'm proud to announce that uh, for the high school event, currently we could uh, use a little help. Winnicott is number three in the state for uh, fundraising for uh, the high school plunge, and they've raised over $9,000 so far for 283 donors. And locally, the number 
two fundraiser is a re local resident, Kevin Rush. Kevin's been a longtime plunger, and he and his family have raised over the history of the event in the vicinity of seventy-five thousand dollars wow. um, over the course of their participation. So, it is a local event, but it's also a lot of local participants. So, we would encourage, uh, obviously, with the, the board's uh, discretion, to. Uh, hold the event on some of the town property for people to come down and support a great charity. Okay. And I'll entertain any questions. Okay, questions. No Mr. questions. Waddell? I'm sure you do a great job. You always do. Mr. Bridal. No, the police department does a great job. They've all, they've sponsored this, or not sponsored, but supported it for many years. Mm -hmm. And we do get good, uh, just to uh, be remiss if I didn't mention Hampton Fire and Rescue. Uh, coordinate our safety efforts down in the water and on the sand, and we also get great support from Public Works during our setup phase. So I want to make sure those folks get mentioned. And congratulations to the the folks, the the, the kids over to Winter Cunnet for the money they raised. It's really taken off. Last year was the first year that we had more high school participants on Saturday than we did on the uh, adult side. So wow. the high school kids are really getting enthusiastic about it. So it's starting to take over. Mrs. Wellesley. No, thank you. You've, you've put in for good weather for that day, though. Um, pray. Well, I'm not going in the water, so it really doesn't affect me that much. <laughs> Mr. Bean. Chief, great job, great leadership. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, this is one of the best uh, things that I think happens here in Hampton. And <clears throat> I think that the police department's always done an outstanding job uh, backing this whole thing up and um, being the front person, you know, being the, the main go-to group that's connected with it, right? They're very good. Uh, Special Olympics is very good at all of their events. They try to make a connection to the community through police and fire and the number of events they sponsor, and they, they really try to embrace the community for all the support they get. And then I just can't say that uh, the proudest thing I am of that it, is it's one of those charities where the money stays in the state of New Hampshire, goes to New Hampshire athletes. It does not get funneled off to any other organizations, and they're their ratios are one of the best in the in the uh, areas of charity. And if I'm not mistaken, it was around six hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars last year. I believe that is right. So I think it was just a little north of there. I think it was close to the six eighty, but I'd yeah. have to check that. And that I believe was a record. So hopefully you'll have another record. I'm for next hoping. Year. Good weather. Uh, it's unfortunate the Patriots won't be in the Super Bowl, but that'll give more people more time to come down yes. and spend some time <laughs> at the beach. Right. Thank okay. you. Before he leaves, Mr. Chairman, can we just ask you your video system for the station? Where are you on that? I was pawing through the purchase orders, but I didn't see the video system. We have not uh, begun any research on that yet because I wanted to sit down with the manager to make sure which direction we're going as far as the actual number oh, that we're going to have to okay. utilize. So we have not gone of those items that were on Warren articles that are being purchased yeah. out, of, out of the surplus. I just had that video system. No, nope, it's it's coming. It's the top priority. The other things can wait um, as soon as we get the uh, conversation going with the manager. Uh, we'll get that going. Okay. I'll give, you an update. I'll give you an update as soon as I can. See, you got me worrying about it. Thank uh, you. I would worry about it. It's a very uh, liability conscious uh, move for us to make. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have um, Christy, Finance Director. <clears throat> Good evening. Uh, yeah. New last name, Finance Director. Christy, Finance Director. <laughs> All right. The lady with the money. Ooh. All right. So um, we're calling this First Pass at 2015. But Fred and I were talking before I left today, and I think it's a really strong first pass at uh, the end of 15. So um, you guys should have received in your boxes, I think, Friday, maybe Saturday. I think it was actually Saturday. They all run together at this time of year for me. Um, the monthly monthly slash year-end financial report, uh, the it was the 12th month of the year, so it's a target is 100%. The motor vehicle income total for the year came in at $3.2 million, which is $294,000 above the budget, 17.2% above the target, and $219,000 ahead of 2014. The other major contributors to the year's income total of $8.18 million, so about $8 million. 18,000, 18, 180,000 were payment in lieu of taxes at 244,000, interest on taxes at 354,000, building permit at 320,000, state of New Hampshire at 1,295,000, departmental income at 671,000, 
rice sewer at 113,000 and parking lots at 508,000, land rent at 166,000, franchise fees at 246,000, insurance reimbursements at 227,000, and the real estate trust at $503,000. Um, I just did a fun little comparison for the fun facts. I have kids, so you know, I gotta have all those fun facts. So the next little paragraph kind of gives you a comparison, comparing 14 to 15, just so people could see where we were revenue-wise and to uh, take note of the growth in the town and like building permits and fire and all of that. So um, interest on taxes came in at 19,000 less than 2014. And I will commend the tax collector because that must mean she's doing a good job of collecting those taxes if there's no interest. Building permits came in at 59,000 higher than 2014. State of New Hampshire was 94,000 less than 2014. Departmental income was 123, I'm pretty sure that should have a thousand after it, 123,000 higher than 2014. Parking lots were 55,000 higher. Real estate trust was 190,000 less. And um, I would also add that the total revenues were up 590,000 for 2014 and 317,000 over the 2015 estimated revenues. So those are just kind of my fun facts. The um, expense summary shows the year-to-date expenses by department. At the end of December, the operating departments with open purchase orders but without debt service were 98.15% of the budget which is 1.85% lower than the month's target of 100%. Uh, this puts us under budget by $431,500. And if you compare that to 2014, um, at 2014 at this point, which was the first pass, we were at 98.4% of the budget or 1.6% below the target. So we were very close um, in 15 and 14. So I didn't uh, provide you guys with a line by line of each department. That doesn't seem to be what we have done in the past at the end of the year, So, but it is all there um, for you to review. We're gonna finalize these numbers but amongst the next couple of weeks and the auditors are coming in the week of February 15th. So when I was looking back at past January's and February's uh, meetings and different things that were approved and stuff, it, Looks like you'll probably see me again in about two more weeks, right before the audit, and I should have some firmer uh, end of year. But like I said, Fred and I uh, were talking earlier, and we took a good scrub of the purchase order list and all that. So I think uh, we're in fairly good shape at this point. Um, also, in your box, you should have received... Do you want to do questions on that first, or the purchase orders and all that next? Um, what do you prefer? I don't... Anyone have any questions on the financials? What you, what you, yeah, and the yeah. Just, yeah, really good job and stuff. And and uh, it's really nice to see that the revenues are up. And yes. It's so many departments, the revenues were up really good. That's why I did and, fun facts. What's that? That's why I did fun facts. Yeah, fun facts. That's <laughs> nice to read. And, you know, I think that we really have to be cognizant of the fact if that's going to continue into next year, you know, Hopefully. if our building permits are up there, if we're still going to have that same kind of revenue coming in. So uh, I think that that's an important thing for us as the Board of Selectmen to keep in mind and, and to look at um, what's going on. But I, it's really great uh, to see that. I mean, some things were down lower. A lot of things were up higher, though, which was really nice. And it looks like most of the departments came in pretty close to where they should be. Yep. And it was sort of at the end that you kind of put a squash on spending, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, which helped. So, yeah, good job and, and really nice, nicely done. Mr. Bridal. All set. Excellent job. Wesley. Yeah, Christy, uh, uh, interesting. The state of New Hampshire, 94,700. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, is it 94,700 less than 2014 or 94,700? Which are, I'm just. Less than 14, yes. Okay, so they didn't give us as much money, basically, yes. in 2015. Yes. Right? which is not surprising, I guess. I was fair. I did fun facts across the board for all the big money hitters, so. Yeah. Okay. And one other quick question. <clears throat> Do you happen to know, or could you get for us, the amount of money uh, that, that came in on uh, 
when the tax rate was set. I was going through all my paperwork when the tax rate was set, and I couldn't find it. The amount of um, revenues that were used to set the tax rate. I had that. I looked all through the stuff that I got from Steve Hamilton, and I couldn't. Um. Yeah, I can get that for you. I did. I, I looked at that this weekend because that's how I came up with the comparison to let you know that it I'd was. I'd like to see how close we were. Well, we were. We were three hundred seventeen thousand more than the estimated revenues at the time the tax rate was set. That was that fact down there. Yep. Three one seven more. Yep. Point eight. Well, whatever. Yep. Three hundred seventeen thousand eight hundred. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Bean. No questions. Thank you, Director. Thank you very much. Oh. And you're moving on to yep. the... Oh, okay. Yep. I like the fun facts also. <laughs> Don't get rid of her too fast. You did a great job of Something that. different. I had to mix it up a little. Well, I think that makes it interesting. Thank yep. you for everyone. Um, okay. So also in your packets, you should have received a little summary sheet. Um, I did put a new one in there today because I had failed yep. to leave the little note on the bottom there for you, what the little asterisks were for. Um, but basically, this will show you uh, the total open purchase orders that we had on 1231 of 15. Um, and it also shows you the warrant articles that are still in progress. So therefore, they need to be carried forward into uh, 15. Fred and I have reviewed all of them. We uh, went back to the department heads to make sure that these projects are still ongoing projects. Um, we've reviewed the warrant articles to make sure that they didn't lapse at the year end because uh, then you wouldn't be able to bring them forward into 16. But so that's kind of a breakdown there in regards to that. Uh, at the bottom, I just show you those numbers don't total out to the total purchase orders because those are just highlights of some of the larger ones. Uh, I know Mary Louise had asked earlier, and the PD security system is the cameras, and it's right on there at 110,567, and it's to Howard Systems. Ah. I think it's on page two of the list I gave you. Yes, it is, on near the bottom of page two. Um, but so that's basically what you're looking at. So it's a total of 1,838,852.27. That includes the, the Warren articles, as you can see, are the lar larger number there. They're $1,292,349 is still outstanding in Warren articles. And the purchase orders are at uh, 546000 $503.27. Questions? Mr. Waddell? Yeah, uh, more for the town manager. I mean, all these sir. open warrant articles are still being worked on. They're Nothing is going to be worked on until this board approves the... the, the uh, I mean, the prior ones? He means the warrant articles. The warrant, articles. the warrant articles, yes. They're all they're all currently in progress. Progress, and we're yeah. making progress Well, they on have... Um, for instance, the wastewater treatment uh, plant facilities studying on lapsing. Yeah. Uh, no work is being done on that because we had to finish up the prior one on wastewater yep. treatment plant. So that'll be started this year. Okay. So these are all these all have non-lapsing dates that where they're where they're non-lapse. Most of those are 2020. Okay. So we'll be probably starting all of those this year. Okay. Mr. Bridal. Also, thank you, Mrs. Wolseley. Yes, Christy, uh, it says fire engine. I'm assuming that's the pumper that's on order. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is that the balance of the money that we will have to pay when it's completed? What, what is that 21000 That's the money that is left in there. Um, we've already made the large payment on that. That's a, right. more of a contingency for so once any build design things off, that come up. Yes. If we owe anything else, or uh, that's fine-tuning at the end It'll of it. It'll come out of the twenty one. Okay. All right. Uh, High Street Lafayette Road drainage. Why have we still got that? They, did, was that not completed? It's completed, but we have to have retention. We have retained until April of the next. Of the, was it this year? Retention for April, April of 2016. 16, yes, because we're required to retain money in case something in case goes wrong. The new yeah. bill to get screwed up. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's, and then it will lapse. It will lapse out, and, and, and the money will be paid out to the, to the vendor, and anything that's left will go either in the general fund of the Treasury or any money to be returned to the federal government will be returned to them. Okay, great. Yeah, because we're still literally holding retainage owed to the vendor right. at this point. Correct. And then the uh, part-time special police officers. Now, that's the class, the second <laughs> class that the chief has coming in 
right. this year yep. saved over from right okay and that's the balance of that appropriation that should be extinguished sometime this year yeah okay and one more on the bottom under highlighted items uh, the PD security system. I just asked the chief about that, and he said you're still working on the vendor or whatever. We are. Now, how was that locked in? This is locked we, in. We've we done it on a purchase order. You locked it in on a purchase order? All of these order. have existing purchase orders. I issue. thought the original estimate was 80000 Actually, no, it was more than that. It was? Yes. Because yeah. I had that figure in the back yeah. of my mind. So it's in the neighborhood now. It's 110, 567, 75. Okay. Yeah. And then you'll. That is a quote. And it'll. Do we have an estimate on when it can be installed, or are we still? Uh, until this board approves the encumbrances, nothing's going okay. to happen with it. Okay. So I think that's probably think something. All the departments you have been tonight. on hold. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Christy. Mr. Bean. No questions. Thank you, Director. Thank you very much. You've worked hard on this. Thank you. And we need to, if the board wishes, uh, we need to, to we need to make the motion to to uh, authorize the encumbrance of these purchase orders and to proceed with it, with it, carrying out the purpose of the order itself. So moved. Whoops, Second. whoops, whoops. I want some figures here. What what specific figure are we talking about? One million eight thirty eight eight fifty two twenty seven. General fund related total in the middle of the page. That right. takes in everything, right? Yes, that takes in everything. I went back and checked it all. So moved. So where, when, okay, are you, you moved. I just want to make sure I understand what I'm doing. So you've got the what's that? The 546 and the, the 1.92, 1 yep. 349. Right. And the highlighted out items on the bottom are not factored into that. Yes, they are because they're included in the purchase order total. There, I just highlighted some of the. Okay. Anything that was over ten thousand on the purchase order list, I you put it out. down here so that you guys could. Okay. It would draw your attention to but it. Just help me with the math because I'm not doing yep, that. Yep, it's five hundred and forty-six thousand so five hundred three dollars and twenty-seven cents, which gotcha. is encumbrances or purchase orders, and yeah. then it's one million two hundred and ninety-two thousand three hundred and forty-nine dollars in Warren articles. And the Probably a year Warren articles. Highlighted hey, items yeah. go in where? They are included in the five hundred and forty-six thousand five hundred and three dollars. Okay. We have a first. We have a second. I'm just trying to figure Any out. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much. You're welcome. For coming tonight, we yeah. appreciate it, and we know you're going to be busy on Saturday. Yes. I'll be there Saturday. We look forward to it. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Next, we have. Oh, uh, Skip Webb here with some exciting news oh. from James House. The James House is always exciting, isn't it? You hit the lottery. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening. Well, this is this is more exciting, I think, than anything that I've reported to you the, the uh, 14 years of my activity. Um, first, want to thank you for uh, giving me this appointment, but even more so the appointment that you gave me in September. Uh, your backing unanimously of the LCHIP grant meant a lot in our obtaining that grant. Um, we didn't get all the money that we were expecting. Uh, we asked for money to uh, put siding on the house to restore all the windows, uh, to restore all the floors, and to put a back staircase in. Now, that would also be a restoration. There is, is a back staircase, but you can't walk on it. What we've gotten is a $28,000 grant. That means we will be spending $56,000 because it's a matching grant. We'll be spending $28,000 of our own money. You look as though you have a question. That's exciting. No. That's, you made me happy. <laughs> we'll have plenty of uh, this will allow us to put siding on the entire outside of the house and also restore all the windows in the house. It will also allow us to add a handicap door so that the handicap can see what the first floor is like. We still can't get them up to the second floor. And 
the little L that doesn't have any windows in it, it will have windows in it again. So what has looked like a bad piece of real estate that everyone is laughing about because it's covered over with plywood, it's going to look like one of your pristine pieces of real estate. We have two years to do the restoration. The uh, carpenter, our master carpenter, is going to be Bob Pothier. He's worked on the house since the beginning of it being uh, termed as a, as a museum and from the start of the restoration. He is considered as one of the best master carpenters in New England. So we're very lucky to have him, and he's doing it at a reduced price for us. And it's that reduced price also that helps get the grant. I want to thank all of those people that backed us with their membership, with their donations, because we wouldn't have been able to come up with the match money if it wasn't for that. Uh, the other critical part of getting that was uh, charitable gaming. And we started in Milford for four years, and then we, uh, for about uh, three years, have done it uh, at, at Atlantic uh, Gaming, uh, Oceanfront Gaming, down at the beach. We are asking as many of you as can to join the James House this coming year. Now, why am I asking the residents of Hampton to join? It is critical that we end up with restored flooring and with that back care staircase being restored. So we're talking about another $5,000 that Elchip feels we can make on our own. If we make it on our own, Elchip will consider giving us a grant after that expenditure for the cement work, uh, for the walls, the ceilings, now, that's not critical to the museum, as those of you who know and have been in it. Um, but it would clean it up a little bit. You wouldn't have the holes in the ceiling with the uh, mess coming down from the, from the rodents, and the squirrels, and the, and the mice. And um, so if you can help us out this one year, even if you haven't joined before, you join now. And I can assure you, you're going to have two very good programs on opening day and also the Harvest Festival. Hmm. I'd like to switch to something else. We have a program that is fairly new. We tested it last year. It's continuing this year. It's offered to high school students. And the high school students get two classroom credits for each year that they participate. Now, when you think of it, two year, two classroom credits, that's six credits in addition to what you have to show the colleges as far as your academics is concerned. The program is the James House Junior Director Program. And this is a good time to sign up because you're coming back off of your Christmas break. And they're giving you a time through your guidance department to sign up for this program. What you will learn is actually everything as far as the running of a nonprofit organization is concerned. You will learn the finances, you will learn the problems of 
interfacing with the public. You will learn the problems of collecting donations. You will participate in every way except for the final vote. And the only reason why we have to remove the view from the final vote is because you aren't 18 years of age or older. Those of you who are 18 or older, we can allow you to vote and be a full director. We have four girls in the program now. All of them are also docents at Strawberry Bank. I got a call from Stanford, uh, sorry, from Stanford, <laughs> from Portsmouth High School. They have a student that's interested. They will offer the same thing, but two credits for participation per year. They have one student that will be joining us next week. How do you get involved with this? Look at our website. James House Museum Hampton, that's all you have to put in. It will be one of the first few to show up on your screen. Look over the website, see if it fits your interest. It tells you how to contact me. Contact me, I will give you a tour of the James House. No obligation. It's just to make sure that you are comfortable with what we're asking you to do. We'll discuss the whole program with you. Why and don't then we bring that to the Board of Selectmen and let them ask you some questions. We have Mr. Waddell here. He was a teacher. Mm -hmm. Do you have any questions? Uh, no, great job, uh, Skip. Great job in getting the grant. Great job with that program. I think it's super. Uh, I, th I think you're doing everything really, really well down there. And, you know, it's a really great endeavor for the town, and, and it's just part of the history. It's super. Mr. Bridal? Well, I drive by that place at least once or <laughs> twice a day. Uh, it, it's good to see how well you have been a caretaker of that property. You've done an excellent job. I do got to say, you, you got to go over and check the shed because the door is blown open. I got that today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys do an excellent job. Uh, all, all your board of directors, I, I know, I see them over there, and I see you're in there taking care of the property, the grass, the, the stuff. You, you have done an excellent job over the years of taking care of the property. Congratulations on your grant. Uh, I'm glad to see you have the junior director program. I think that's a great opportunity for students, and uh, hopefully you'll, you'll get a few more from just listening tonight. So thank you. Yeah, Skip has been joined with a lot of people over there helping, and people like Ann Kaiser is another one, bit one that's really worked hard there through the years, and I think this is wonderful. Mm. We really owe it, and to think you're sharing it all with the school, it's amazing. It's really great. Ann Kaiser is actually one of our prime Charter people. Charter members, she, yeah. She, she helped to forward the organization tremendously. She's very active. Mrs. Wolseley. It's just, it's amazing what you've done with that historic property. Would you like to tell the visitor, the uh, viewers who are watching what the annual membership is? How much is the annual membership? Uh, the annual membership is $40 per family. It's 24, sorry, $25 per individual. It's uh, $10 per student. That's certainly reasonable. And um, even though we don't have a business category, when you re look at the categories, business categories really start at $100. And if people want to mail you a check or ask you for a membership, where would they send? They send it to the James House Association, Inc., Post Office Box 234, Hampton, New Hampshire, 03842. Great. Post office box 234. Great. And what happens, um, Skip, if the people uh, joined last year? Do you send out notice that they need to pay up again this year, or what? how does that work? Yes. Uh, we send out a newsletter that explains everything that's happened during the past year and what we're expecting to do in the coming year. 
So when do uh, that people... newsletter also includes an insert for uh, reapplying for membership? So when people join last year, when is their membership due to be for this year? Uh, they will receive that in uh, in June. Okay. And that's when they would be so forwarding their checks. So a lot of people are already. A lot paid of people though uh, hold it off. But some people give it to us and mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's throughout the year. Good. Yeah. We will collect membership. Yeah. So I uh, mean, you know, a lot of people might be waiting till pay it after the first of the year, so they get credit on their uh, yeah. charitable giving exemptions That's right. for next year. Uh, your membership is one hundred percent charitable donation. So. Um, that's another thing to think about. Thank you, Rick, for reminding me of that. You can take uh, the, the I amount believe I, jo off I know of I joined taxes. last year, and um, that's why I wasn't really sure of when I owe. I'm always owe somebody something. So I guess <laughs> I'm okay till June, but I'll be glad to pay it early. Mr. Bean. I have no questions. Thank you for a great job. Um, do you have any other points to make tonight, Scott? Yes, I have one uh, very important point, and that is... Um, as you know, I've served as president of the association for many years. Um, I'm 75. Still young. Uh, I'm to the point now where I should be training somebody else and somebody else should be taking the reins. Uh, otherwise, I might not be here to train somebody else. So <laughs> um, we are looking for a president. Uh, we have an excellent board of directors, as, as Jim Waddell mentioned, and uh, so did Rusty Bridal. Um, yeah, Rusty, you'd be a great president. <laughs> the nomination. Thanks. <laughs> I think you do a wonderful job, Rick. <laughs> so we are looking for a new president. Um, the board is, even though they're a wonderful board, uh, no one on the board wants to accept that responsibility. Uh, they are they are doers and, and idea people, but they they don't want the the burden of the responsibility of the property and uh, and the programs. Sounds and, like you better stay healthy, Skip. <laughs> Uh, the president does not have to be a Hampton resident. Um, we have uh, two uh, directors now, one from Dover and one from Northampton. Um, Northampton one has been a director, and actually was a president for, uh, for two years, and that's Bob Dennett. Uh, he's still with us. He is the longest serving member. So if anyone is interested, look at the website again. See if you're comfortable, contact me, send me your resume, I'll pass it to the directors, and uh, hope we can find a replacement early enough so that I can uh, have uh, time to train the person. I will be staying on as a director if the membership allows me to, which I think they will, uh, until... Uh, a new president is fully trained. Well, I think I can speak for the board here and assure you that we'll all bring it to, if we meet anyone that we think will be interested, we'll be glad to tell them about it. So Super. thank you tonight for coming in. You've done a lot. We appreciate Finding it. Finding something, too, has a lot to do with uh, how long the association runs the museum before it passes to the Historic Society. We know that they don't want it. It's really a pass to you people. Mm -hmm. So Okay, well, great. Thanks, Skip. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman? Yes? Uh, sometimes uh, re nice reporters are looking for human interest stories and special <laughs> stories. So you might have a member of the media uh, contacting you, perhaps, and get a little publicity out. Mm -hmm. Thanks for coming in tonight, Skip. Behind us, and he's going to be talking to me tomorrow about another thing. And he heard this tonight, so I'm sure he'll be talking to me about Thank it. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> Thank you, Skip. We appreciate Thank you. it. Thanks, Skip. Next, we have approval of minute, minutes. Number one, correction of minutes for 11 16 2015. 
Motion to accept. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Next, we have January 4th, 2016. Motion to uh, accept as presented. All those in favor? Unanimous. Next, we have uh, 2000, I mean, uh, number three is January 11th, 2016. Motion to accept. I, okay. 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 I have a problem with that, gentlemen. Um, my remarks were limited to about two sentences uh, on the trustees. It's either page five or six. And I think that it would be uh, certainly more appropriate if my remarks as a whole, there's a lot of other uh, uh, information in there. And I think if my remarks as a whole were incorporated, it would be appropriate. I was not happy to see such an abbreviated version of what I said that night. So, so. do you have um, a, a, a written down what you would like to be? No, the lady has it on tape. And all you have to do is watch the meeting. I assume she watched the meetings. And okay, we'll have alive. to go over those again, Mr. Welch. Yeah, I would sir. appreciate um, that. Next, we move on to January 12, 2016. Motion to accept. We'll move. Second. All those in favor, unanimous. Next, we have January 14, 2016. Motion to accept. Second. All those in I'm favor? Abstaining because I was not able to make the meeting. All we have four and one abs, uh, abstaining yeah. because she wasn't at the meeting. Right. Moving on to the town manager's report. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, as was sort of indicated earlier, uh, this Friday, January 29th, 2016, at 3 p.m. Uh, we are going to be selling at auction the property at 27 Pearl Street. Uh, we hope a lot of folks will show up and express some interest, and we can get that back in the tax rolls as soon as possible. Uh, property owners who are interested in applying for exemptions from real estate should contact the assessor's office before March 1, 2016 to complete the necessary forms and submission materials that must be submitted by that date where you will not be able to apply in 2016. Property owners at the Hampton Beach in, that live in the Hampton Beach precinct who wish to apply for the tax assessment reduction must contact the assessing department before April 15th to obtain and complete the necessary forms for submission by that date. The deliberative session of town meeting will be held this coming Friday, January 30th at 8.30 a.m. at the Winnicott High School. Saturday. Saturday, yeah. Going to do too many things on Friday. Uh, <laughs> Friday, I got Friday on the mind because of the sale. It's Saturday, January thirtieth, eight thirty a.m. The meeting starts uh, at Winnicott kind of High School. Mr. Chairman, we've we've received a. Uh, I had a telephone call today from Pete Tilton, uh, who's been, as you know, he's he's one of our uh, gentlemen who does a lot of fishing and clamming and so forth in the in the general area. The clam flats have been closed now for several weeks, uh, a couple of months actually. Um, there are very high bacteria counts that's keeping DES, keeping that closed down. Uh, they're trying to find the source of that material. It's somewhere on the Taylor River. Mm. They don't know where. Uh, but as sort of a comparison, when Pete and I were talking, uh, apparently the count is high enough to believe that at least a small septic truck would be dumped in there daily mm. in order to uh, get the count that high. That may be a lot, but uh, where the state's inspecting everything along the Taylor River, hopefully we'll find that soon. It's not a town problem, I can tell you that, because we're not missing any any of our affluent. We really don't have any lines over there. Uh, I received a call today from the uh, United States Naval Shipyard in Portsmouth. Um, sometime this spring, we don't know when yet. The, obviously, um, these things are uh, somewhat classified as far as movements are concerned. The USS Hampton is going to be coming to Portsmouth. Oh, the sub is coming. And um, they would like us to participate as a host community for the sub's arrival. Oh. And uh, I indicated to them that we probably would like to do that. And uh, they're going to be in touch with us, and we're going to be in touch with them and try to come up with a, uh, a host community program. So we won't know when, when the sub is going to arrive until sometime late spring. Uh, and it's just a 24-hour window for us to be notified. So I think that's great. Keep on working on that. Uh, you had approved the purchase of an Ultra Nexus for the uh, Channel 22. Oh. That was purchased for 
$3,299, which was substantially less than the list we had, which was 5000 right. And uh, it's in the process of being worked on now mm -hmm. so that we can have a spare should, should our system break down again. That's it, sir. Great. Mr. Bridle. Well, I, uh, I'm, I'm sorry to hear the clam flats are closed. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of people that enjoy that. I've also spoke every time at every town meeting we've had on on Sua West of 95. Yes. And, I, and I've said all along yeah. that how bad are we polluting Taylor River, mm -hmm. and that we at some point we're going to have to address that. So um, true. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that's happening, but it's it's wake a problem. That's it's a wake up call, and it's something yep. waiting to happen. Yep. And we need to at some point this town needs to address sewering that area. That area is, is probably the most developed area west of 95. Mm -hmm. There are there are other parts of 95 that are still pretty rural, yeah, but that area with the trailer park and and the in the number of houses down there, um, we need to we need to start taking a strong look at that over the next few years and what we're going to do about sewer over there. So, and we do have a plan to put sewer in, right? So. Hmm. Mrs. Wolseley. Well, I will remind all and sundry <clears throat> that both the Budget Committee and the Board of Selectmen in 1986 put forth the first sewer bond for $7.8 million with the understanding that the bonds would come up every five years. They would overlap at some point, but at least four or five of the bonds would be ongoing so that we could sewer the town. And after the first bond passed, everybody made excuses and didn't want to put them up because in 1991, the economy was bad. And of course, we could have had a lot more for our money at a time like that. But there was no follow through. So when you think back, that's a long time ago. And we've been sitting on our hands doing nothing. And yes, we do need to do sewers. Yes. And by the way, with all the development going in on the Montrone property west of I-95, Mr. Bridal, you're going to see a lot more building over there. And most of his property is hooked to the sewer. Um, there's, that's well, that's probably going to continue, would be my guess. Otherwise, they wouldn't be doing it. Mr. Bean. Mr. Welch, uh, you and the uh, command element, your department heads, the boards, the uh, budget committee, uh, uh, everybody that contributed to this, uh, this process, uh, uh, congratulations. Uh, it's the Microsene action. Uh, it is uh, fully transparent. There's a lot of participation. Uh, there's disagreement uh, in, on Saturday and then at the ballot uh, in March people come together and uh, they determine their budgets. The citizens do. And uh, you and your staff uh, along with other boards have worked hard and uh, I congratulate you and it has been a tremendous amount of work and sometimes it gets overlooked to produce uh, this executive type of quality in the warrants. Uh, and uh, uh, I just can't speak highly enough about uh, your leadership in the town, uh, your subordinates, and your uh, department heads, along with uh, the Budget Committee and, and this board here under Chairman Griffin. So thank you very much. We all thank you. Yes, sir. Um, and I would like to uh, congratulate Mr. Montron for developing his property and adding to the tax base in Hampton, and that he is, did take the responsibility to extend the sewer to the other side of 95, and I hope that he continues to partner with Hampton and we can appreciate further development of that type. That's the type of thing we need in Hampton and Mr. Montrone is obviously a leader. Thank you. And Mr. Chairman, Mrs. Mrs. Wolseley. I have one more because Rusty got me off the subject on the sewers. Um, Mr. Montrone is not only making the town, uh, benefiting the town, he's benefiting the state to the tune of $105,000 on that cornerstone project. None of it coming to Hampton, and no immediate um, mitigation property that I've seen, although supposedly they have something in mind. So the state's got their paws in that, too. I have a couple of questions for Fred, and I didn't uh, really have a chance to ask when Christy was here. Um, the I have not received answers to my questions on the audit. I think the three questions that I submitted um, when Mr. Egan was in here, the first question I think he answered in pretty good shape, but the second and third, are we going to wait till the auditors come in, do you think? Or I would like to get an answer to my questions. They should be coming in very quickly. 
next couple of weeks. Okay. And then on the 611-3 ordinance, because that whole ordinance, the wording of that whole ordinance was replaced, I know I'm being a pain in the neck, but could we possibly see a calculation on that? You said you felt it would come out the same as current, but I, I really would like to see a, a Is calculation. Is this under business or old business? Because we're going to be moving on Well, it's to under the business. town, well. Well, I don't see it listed the town, there. Well, I don't think it's something right. he talked town about. Town manager, all okay, right. Why don't you save it for uh, either old okay. business or new business? All right, um, I will do old Any business Any other questions next. about his report? No. Okay, moving oh. on to, oh, Mr. Waddell. I knew we were moving <laughs> on to something. Go over there. <laughs> Still here, you know, just <laughs> hanging out. No, I, I just want to ditto uh, on the sewerage thing that it's something that needs to be looked at, yeah. and needs to be investigated, and needs to be dealt with. I think that's uh, that's very important. And uh, ditto on on putting together all the Warren articles and all that. Thank you. Moving on to old business, Mr. Waddell. Uh, nothing. Mr. Bridal. Nothing at the same. Mrs. Wolsey. Yes, here we go. I would like an explanation, please, on the. Uh, difficulty with calculating the uh, police and Teamsters details. I, I have a hard time understanding how the figure came out, how there was such a discrepancy in the figure that was initially presented to the Budget Committee. It was my understanding, and I ran this by Fred the other day, that when Mr. Schwotzer left, he had everything pretty well lined up, and he offered if there was a problem to uh, you know, just give him a call and he would reach in and help. We've been doing the collective bargaining um, calculations under the Sandman ruling for a lot of years. And that was a pretty horrifying uh, problem, uh, going from 330,000 projection to 660,000. So I just, you know, if you, if you overstate something and then you back off it, Everybody's happy. If you understate and then it comes in really high, and in that case it doubled, that gets people all excited. So I would like to know, there must be an Excel spreadsheet for the CBAs or something somewhere, but I really would like an answer on how that uh, projection got so messed up. I will ask for you. I appreciate that. And um, <clears throat> the MIS fund, are we going to take that, let's see, you've got an article here. Oh, that's the gristmill dam. Um, I went back and looked at the uh, meetings and, and reviewed. I had some calls from people. And some members were asking to discontinue, but they said they'd meet on January 18th. Did we ever get confirmation? I know they had discussed it, and you had run it by us, but there was, was there ever a formal request to have that MIS article in there? Well, the budget committee discussed it. Ah, uh, yes. And and uh, the result of the discussion was that it came back to the town. Yeah. And after we finished discussing it at the town level, we said there's one way to fund this, and that's with the MIS fund. Yeah. Uh, without raising taxes for yeah. the purpose for which they were discussing it, so we put the warrant article in, uh, and then the budget committee changed their mind and said they didn't want it. Oh, good grief. Okay. Uh, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't be doing it. Ah. And um, the money would be earmarked for that. Uh, it can't be spent for anything else. Right. So um, basically we sort of, as, as, as we went through the, the process of, of vetting each of these particular articles, we said, no, why don't we just go ahead and proceed the way the board had instructed us to proceed, because you had approved that article. Okay. Uh, and the money will be held uh, until such time as everybody's happy with the result, and then we'll spend it for the purpose. Okay. We won't have to wait another year or two years or whatever okay. to get it, so. <clears throat> Anything I else, ran Mrs. Out. Oh. <laughs> okay, old business, Mr. Bean. Negative, sir. And moving on to new business, Mr. Waddell. I'm set. We get the deliberative session motions, right? Mr. Bridal. All set. Mrs. Wellesley. Now, are we doing something with these? I've got a move to amend it. Is this the motion for us to make at the deliberative session? Yes. yes, and it's part of this uh, assigning individuals who are going to move and second the articles yeah. on the floor. 
these these are the, these motions are the result of work with the Department of Revenue. Okay. Mr. Bean. I have nothing, sir. Okay, I would just like to remind people that they they have until the end of the week at five o'clock on Friday to put their name in for public office, and there's uh, uh, plenty of room for people that want to put their name out there, and um, I encourage people to do that. And Mr. We're now. I asked you about the business. Yes, you did. Yeah. You're on top um, of this time. And now we're going to do the deliberative session question. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would suggest that we start with Article 10, which is the, the, uh, the sewer bond. Uh, Article 1 is the election. Articles 2 through 9 are the zoning amendments, uh, which obviously the, the, the zoning board or the uh, planning board will move. So Article 10 would be the first article uh, to be uh, moved um, by the board. Okay. Uh, Phil, did you want to move that? Sure. Um, Whatever you uh, say. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Sure. Who wants to yeah. second? And um, I'll second. Okay. So that's Phil and Jim. And then Article 11. Whoops. That is Article 11. No, that's Article 10. Article 11 is the okay, budget. Mrs. Wellesley, we Wait a will, uh, why don't you listen to oh, what I we're see doing what you're and then saying. you... Okay. And that's Don't usually moved in. by the Budget Committee, I yes. believe. Yeah. So. Good. Uh, the next one would be the uh, CBA for the Firefighters 2664. Also moved. What number is that? Uh, that's Article 12. Number 12. Number 12. I worked that bold, so I'm happy to do that. Okay, okay. so that's going to be Phil, and I will second that. I offered to make the motion. Mary Louise said she'd make the motion. Phil said he'd make the second. Oh, okay. I'm okay. sorry. And we have the next one, the CBA Fire Officers uh, 3017. I'll move that as well. Who wants to make you? the second? Doesn't matter, Mr. Chairman. Just hammer away, sign away. Okay, so Phil, are you going to do the second? I'm 13. Okay. That's good. Number 14 is? Police Officers CBA. Oh, okay. Uh, Phil, Phil, you want to do that? You tell me to do, Mr. Chairman. And then uh, second it. Rusty right. will second it. And 15? Yeah. Uh, police sergeant, CBA. Okay. Um, I'll Jim, second it if Phil wants to move it. Phil wants to move it, and you're going to second it. Good. And 16 is? Uh, Teamsters, CBA. Okay. Uh, Phil? Yes, sir. I'll second it. And Rusty, 17. Uh, 17 is a highway block grant. I'll, I'll do that one. I'll second. Rusty. <coughs> and 18. 18 is a DPW vehicle purchases. I'll, I'll move that. So, Jim. I'll Jim. second it. Rusty. Rusty. And number 19 is the uh, Road Improvement Capital Reserve Fund. I'll be happy to move that. Second. I will. 20. 20 is the High Street uh, Culvert uh, Meadow Pond Drainage Study. Since I live there, I'll move that. <laughs> you doing that, Jim? Yes. I'll second. Okay, number 21 is the Seawall of Bicentennial Park. Phil. Phil. Number 20, thank you. And uh, that's 21. 21. Yep. And Rusty. 22. Is I'll sidewalks. Do. I'll do sidewalks. And Jim. I'll second. Household has this waste collection. Rusty. Sure. And Jim. Utility revaluation. Mrs. Wolseley, did you want to do that one? Or Phil, why don't you do I that one? one? Did you want to second that, Mrs. Wolseley? Uh, yes. What number, do. sir? 24. 24. Number 25 is Human Service Agencies. I'll move that. Please. I'll second. Jim. 26 is Recreation Infrastructure Special Revenue Fund. I'll move that. Jim. Second it. Rusty. 27 is the Police Forfeiture Fund. I'll move that. Second. Rusty. Rusty. Yeah. 28 is the full time fire prevention secretary. I'll do that. Rusty. Yep. Jim. I'll second. 
uh, Management Information System Capital Reserve Fund. I'll move that. I'll Bill second it. Rusty. 30. Conservation Land Acquisition Fund. I will so move. Jim, second it. 31. Will Memorial. Bill. Thank you, sir. And Jim. Okay. 32. Heritage Fund. Mary Louise. Yeah, um, yes, I'll be happy Rusty. to move that. Rusty. 33. Is change name burial trust. Rusty. Sure. I'll Mary, second. Mary Louise. 34. 34. CATV fees distribution. I'll move that. Jim. And Rusty. Amend disposal of surplus county equipment and materials. I'll move that. And Rusty. 36. Land transfer to school district SAU 90. I'll move that again. Rusty. And Bridal. Okay. 37. Accept lettered streets. Bill. Yes, sir. And Jim. Good. Uh, discontinue E Street. <laughs> I'll move that. Jim and Phil. 39. Discontinue a portion of Old Park Avenue. Rusty. Sure. And Jim. 40. The, uh, well, those are petitions. Now that's okay. petition. Yeah. Um, all the rest of petitions, Mr. Chair. So, any other comments? Um, about the deliberative session or anything? Mr. Chairman, we have uh, two motions to amend. Uh, the Council has drafted after discussions with the Department of Revenue. They would like to see Article Number 20, which deals with the grist mill, dam, yeah. high street culvert, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and they'd like to see that rewritten. Good. Uh, and we have proposed a, a rewrite, which we've given you. Uh, Department of Revenue appears to be very happy with that. They're thrilled with it, and uh, they'd like us to move that of session. Um, in Article Number 33, which is Cemetery Burial Trust, there's a couple of uh, uh, minor changes in there, and, and the one large change, which is a two-thirds vote requirement, that uh, DRA and the Attorney General have requested. Oh, so we'll do that at the session. We'll do that at session. Yeah. Okay. Um, any closing comments? Seeing none. No snow. <laughs> we'll move for a motion for adjournment. Motion 2002. to adjourn at 2002. All those in favor, unanimous. I Thank you. I thought we'd be here all night and all of a sudden. <laughs>